bring her to me, my baby. <laughs> Welcome to Anyone Can Cook. Thanks for joining me in my kitchen. Today we are still cooking from the Redwall Cookbook. Today's recipe is called Harvest Berry Sunset Pud, which is basically a jam filled bread cake contraption that then we're going to cover with whipped cream if it turns out in the end because I actually don't know if this will work. So without further ado, here are the ingredients you're going to need for today's recipe. For today's recipe, you're going to need two cups of fresh blackberries, two cups of fresh raspberries, six tablespoons of honey, and one small loaf of white bread. You can also use your favorite bread recipe if you don't want to use store-bought bread. Now that we have our ingredients, let's get started. So the first thing that you want to do to prepare your harvest berry sunset pud is to cut off the crusts of your bread. So we're going to take each piece and just neatly cut off the crusts. We don't need them. It's not like anyone even likes them anyways. Right? And now repeat to the rest of your slices. So I'm about halfway done with cutting off the crusts of my bread and what we're going to do is we're going to be lining a glass bowl with the bread to create kind of like a shell. So start lining your bowl before you finish cutting off the crust of all of your bread just in case you don't need your entire loaf. So we're going to take the first piece and we're going to press it into the bottom and since it's white bread it's really malleable which is great. And then with the second piece, we're going to line it up on the side and then just press it in. After your bowl is completely lined with your white bread and you've pinched all the sides so that there are no gaps, go ahead and set both the bowl and the rest of your loaf aside. And let's head to the stovetop so that we can cook down our berries. In a very, very large saucepan, you're going to combine your two cups of raspberries, your two cups of blackberries, and the six tablespoons of honey. Now, over medium heat, you're going to bring the berries to a simmer, and then you're going to cook them for 10 minutes. After your berries have come to simmer, go ahead and let them cook for another 10 minutes before taking them off the heat. have been cooking for 10 minutes, transfer the saucepan off of the heat. <laughs> Awkward. So the recipe says that once the berries are cooked, you put them into the bread bowl and then you cover them with bread and you put into the fridge. Um, the instructions then further say that you're supposed to be able to flip it out and serve it, like cut it like a cake. Um, Due to my understanding of how berries work, 
it won't solidify. Even if it's in the fridge for 24 hours, the berries will not become a solid substance, so you can't actually cut it like a cake. So I cheated a little bit and I added a bit of cornstarch mixed with water and I put it into the berries while they were cooking and brought it to a boil so that the cornstarch molecules could activate and create more of a jam instead of just a berry reduction, which is basically what the recipe was asking us to make. Um, the biggest difference between a reduction and a jam is that a reduction is a water a watered jam. Um, a jam has the cornstarch or the pectin in it to make it solid or to make it more of a solid than just a straight up liquid. So I reared off the path. Um, I don't want this to fail. I want to succeed and I think the cornstarch way is a much better route to go than the normal not adding anything to the berries route. Um, so stick around till the end of the video to see how it turned out. If it still doesn't turn out, you can add fairy dust to it and it still might not work. So it doesn't matter what you add to it, but we're gonna see how the bread cake thing turns out in the end. Okay. So, using a ladle, now we're going to spoon in our jam into our bread bowl. <sighs> okay. This is, it's gonna soak up. I know that it's going to soak up. <gasps> Let's continue with our nonsense. Okay. After your jam is in your bread bowl, now we're going to have to top it off with the rest of our bread. So, cut off the crusts. Commercial bread. Oops. Ooh, actually, pretty good. Before we move on to our next step, you want to make sure that all of your bread seams are pinched together really, really well. Wow! Oh, it's like a Lunchable! It's a giant Lunchable! <laughs> This is great, this makes me happy. Oh, we should have added peanut butter in there. After your seams have been thoroughly pinched, now you want to take a plate that's slightly smaller than the opening of your bowl and you're going to set it on top. Now on top of the plate, add something heavy so it weighs it down. And now you're gonna set this masterpiece into the fridge for 24 hours before flipping it over. Now, thanks to the magic of editing, 24 hours later, our giant Lunchable is ready to be flipped. Now, I don't have a big enough plate to be able to flip it on, so I'm just going to use what I have on hand, which is a cake board. But you can use anything you have. Now, our pudding is ready to be flipped. Okay, this goes on top. Carefully. It's not gonna come out, is it? No. <laughs> no. Okay. Okay, plan B. Using a spatula or a knife, I'm going to run it around the sides and into the bottom. We should be ready to flip it now. Okay. <sighs> Disclaimer, this might not work. <laughs> Okay. 
It's great. <laughs>that the pudding decided to hold its shape pretty well and it looks really nice when you cover all in whipped cream and then adorn it with berries on the top. I'm really excited to try it. It's practically a giant snackable um, so I'm, I'm, I'm not entirely sure what else to say about it. If you liked today's video go ahead and give me a big thumbs up, subscribe to this channel and don't forget to hit the notification bell so you don't miss the next video. Go ahead and comment down below to tell me what you thought, and of course, bon appetit! I'm a thing, and I'm a taste tester.